Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel for another iRacing video and today it's my first special event I think on the uh, on the service so we're doing the raw before the 24 so it's the 2 hour 24 minutes 2.4 hours um, race at Daytona it's mixed class it's GT4 TCR and the Mazda MX-5s are in this one uh, obviously it's a really long race so um, throughout this race there was obviously times where we're just lapping by ourselves and uh, not much happening so I've tried to trim the fat out as much as I could from the video to make it a bit shorter uh, or as short as possible but um, yeah I might want to play it in double speed or, <laughs> or whatever to get through it but um, yeah I tried to leave in sort of the more interesting parts of the race which you know there's quite a lot of uh, sort of nose detailing through the race it's the nature of TCRs at, uh, at Daytona I guess which is what I'm in them in the Hyundai Qualifying weren't particularly bad. I um, got a bit of a, a tail snapper on going into the bus stop on my first flying lap, so that invalidated that lap. And then I got a slow down carrying into sort of well, basically I couldn't get any speed going into the second lap. So we've qualified second to last out of the people that set a time, which isn't ideal. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking looking to make positions up throughout the race. So let's jump on in, see how we get on. All right, the Daytona Raw qualified basically the back of the grid in class. Although there are a couple of cars behind me now, they must not have set a time. But yeah, I got loose coming into the bus stop on my first flying lap, so that gave me a slowdown. Which meant I couldn't get up to speed for my second lap either. So I did actually set a time that was faster than one person, which was a surprise. But we are very much down the order. Here we go then, we're rolling. Frames are struggling. It's going to be a bit of a slideshow first corner than I feel. Might just need to play it safe and back off just so we don't uh, wipe anyone out in the slideshow. Get ready, going green. Seems to be a lot of cars being drawn on the map even though I turned the settings down. It's a 50 car grid. Green, green, green. Here we go then. The raw before the 24 is go, go, go. Two hours, 24 minutes. You're in the middle, three wide. Right side, two wide. Still there, hold your line. Full slideshow. Still there, hold your line. Right side. Down to 30 FPS. What on earth going on? Could see all the testing that we did went to good avail. Still struggling for frame rate. It's like the GTs have had a big problem. On the rejoining quite badly. Get your foot down, let's get clear. Frame rate's slowly coming back to us. I don't know why it's drawing so many cars when I turn it down. If nothing else, this race is a good test ready for Daytona next week so we can find out things like this that are going wrong. So graphics, graphics settings at the start are definitely not what they need to be. This guy goes wide, gives us a freebie. All right, let's get into a rhythm then. Try and start doing some fuel saving. I imagine he's about to dive bombers back again. Try and get this position back, that's fine. Car on your left. Keep to the right. As long as he gets on with it. I'd rather be tucked up right behind someone to be honest can uh, get much better fuel save that way. We do have a gap in the split already in the class. It's GT4 obviously got a massive run. There's a slow car ahead though. That is a GT4 potentially with damage already. That seems to have very much straight line speed compared to the others. Like we're in draft and we're just not, not gaining on them whatsoever. Frame rate's dropped again. 
wheel. I hope this improves sometime soon, otherwise I might need to like retire to be honest. It's getting it's pretty undrivable in that first corner. Hoping once the field spreads out it'll be fine. It's just the fact that it's having to draw so many cars, but it's not what we're wanting. Still very close racing, very TCL style. Apparently this has become a not last challenge. We're already nine seconds behind class leader. Whatever the uh, the little schmuzzle was with the GT4s at the start, it really, like they rejoined right in the middle of our class and just really split us up. And people going too wide into the bus stop isn't helping either. There's a couple of GT4s mixed up amongst the TCR still here, you can see them on the map there. The yellow, uh, yellow GT4s. Big double snapper, managed to just about get it stopped. One's been off the road. Still way down the order, not really making any any gains on anyone either. Which isn't ideal. Car on your left. Stay on the right. Clear. Finally make a pass. Well, I thought we might end up doing some fuel saving or something through this race. I was imagining a nice cruisy little run, but at the minute we're tryharding just to uh, just to stay with the guys ahead. There's one gone. Didn't know where he was about to rejoin. I got pretty scared there. Be interested to see how close that was. Really need this draft to help pull us back up towards the 15 now then. Massive class split on the map. Damn GT4's ruining it for us. Tried to win it on the, what are we on, fourth, fifth lap, something like that, of a two hour race. Found out the hard way that if you end up accidentally cutting that grass and ending up back on the track here, then you just get automatically DQ'd for reckless driving. <laughs> that happened in a practice session, I got biffed off like that and went spinning across onto the track and uh, yeah, pulled straight out of the session. For my sins. Fabian behind looks like he's wanting to uh, wanting to get on with it, wanting to make moves. Closing right up on the back of us through the international horseshoe. All right, pull us along, Mateus. Give me some drafty goodness. 
keep you safe from the guys behind as much as anything. So we're in the draft, well I guess everyone's in the draft aren't they, I would say I'm just not really gaining on them whatsoever. I guess I'm going to need to start doing more on the brakes to try and catch up a bit. Once I'm in the train I'll be able to uh, sort of lift and coast and sort of tactically start reeling myself back in a little bit but until I get there I need to hustle hard. See I'm dropping more time in the draft now, I'm going to end up being an island at this rate. Fortunately for me, they go like two wide, maybe even three wide into turn one. That helped close up a bit. Don't know why this black car suddenly slow as well, this Audi. Maybe just made a mistake running wide in T1 there. Put him on a bad rhythm for the next section. Oh, get off the grass. Well, I got my wish. We have closed back up this lap. If we get to this guy's bumper, we'll give him a push rather than trying to send it. Doesn't look like we are going to get there though. That Audi's pretty fast in a straight line. Got no speed in a straight line. <laughs> Audi's rapid. Wondered at first if he was pulling across because he had a slowdown, but it doesn't seem to have done. He's put his foot back in it. Seems pretty pointless trying to break the toe because you get the run eventually, you know. Not going to clear him, so we'll do some more fuel. He backs off early in the end, which I wasn't expecting. Maybe he wants some fuel of his own. There was more schmuzzling in T1. Just trying to drive this thing as smooth as I can. Look after it. Alright, so frame rate seems to have sorted itself out, which is nice. It's not amazing, but it's drivable now at least. We can lap 7 of a potential 73 or 72 laps in the TCR. Long way still to go. There's our first off track then. We'll take it. Gets us an extra position. I think this guy looked a little bit slow. We haven't been following him. Looked a little bit loose. Obviously he's gonna be in our slipstream now, so we might just make the move back again, but we'll stay to the inside, send him the long way if he's gonna make the move. Fingers crossed we can hold on. Slowly gaining the positions back. You're in the top ten. Good job.
All right, that was a very TCRTN one there. Back end, very unsettled. Got away with it though. T4s have started catching the Mazdas already, so I expect the two uh, start being some abandoned cars by the side of the road that have crashed out. Although I think actually us as the middle class are the ones that are going to be hardest and probably have the most issues. The GT4s will expect us to be as slow as the Mazdas, but we're not. And the Mazdas will expect us to be as fast as the GT4s, but we're not. So in amongst it all, we just end up sort of... Uh, in each other's way. Well wide. Don't get the slowdown though. I was just going to get the run, no doubt about that. I even braked early, I felt, for the bus stop there. so tricky when the cars go to the high side that you see his runners just completely stalled as soon as he gets out of the draft, like going around the high side. The Audi's got more straight line speed in general, so he's managing to power it through. But uh, yeah, going the, the high side around, around the banking is very tricky. Still go deep. Got a bit of lift and coast for it though. Yeah, that's not the right way to go about it. Don't lift off early into T1 and then try and dive bomb into T2, that's going to slow us both down. In danger of losing this pack ahead now. I lifted off to give it to him and <laughs> he did the same thing, even though he had the run. Being too aggressive on my front tyres, I think. It's starting to uh, get a bit hot, not getting much grip out of them. I think he thinks he's not clear, but he is. And again, he's going to send it into the bus stop so that we both slow down. That was pointless, we just lost 0.7 seconds there. People don't think about the long game it seems. Alright, going to be a battle for the top 10 then I reckon this race. Gonna need to cross our fingers for some incidents in traffic. Still nine seconds behind the leader, but that gap's not come down. Very close to the Mazdas now. There's the first one, little cutie.
should get him through all the bus stop no problems but there's one just ahead it's gonna be more of a problem oh and there is already an issue I think that was a TCR that was gone this Mazda's getting it all wrong it's so out of shape there Gonna have to send it. Jesus. <laughs> Don't know if that Audi's just wrecked a suspension there or what. He took a massive chunk of sausage. Seems to still have speed, so still got all his wheels attached at least. not going to bother keeping playing leapfrog with him because he's not playing the long game anyway so it's pointless he lost us so much time last time when i let him by although no doubt now he's just going to dive into the bus stop again like last time at three seconds but they're only just there it's crazy in these cars that such a small gap is such a big time gap that TCR ahead got held up by these two Mazdas there lost him well lost him about a second there Lee we should hopefully get them both before uh, before the bus stop we do get a little bit of slipstream from the Mazdas as well which is nice I don't think as much as the TCRs, because obviously the TCRs are much bigger rolling boxes, but... Thought that was another off-track then, but we got away with it. About a seventh of the way through the race, so we're getting there slowly but surely. Mazda's not really here nor there in terms of his line. I prefer him right down on the yellow line, but I guess can't be choosers. Didn't really drop Neil that much since we got past him, but we are catching Lee. Thanks to the Mazda's holding him up. Still getting a bit of T, uh, T1 frame rate issues. So, uh, doing this as, as much of a tester, ready for the 24 as much as anything else. Much rather find issues like this now rather than <laughs> later down the line. I don't know if it's related to when that blooming plane comes in or not. Lee pulled out a little bit of time over us through the infield there. He is dropping us just a bit. We'll get this Mazda cleared and then drop in ready for the next one. Made a right mess of this. Lucky save, and lucky for me that Neil got caught behind the Mazda going in there, because otherwise he'd have had me again. And like I said, I don't want to be playing hopscotch with him particularly. Still only nine seconds to the class leader. Left side. Clear. There are a lot of Mazdas here. Wow, we're about to get slideshow vision. Right side. Clear on the right. Right side. 
Clear on the right. Car right. Clear on the right. There's just so many of them. Still there. Still there, hold your line. Clear. Left side. Clear on the left. Right side. Holy cow. <laughs> oh god. That was probably the worst time to catch him. I think, all things considered, I probably did all right to get through them in one piece there. Neil's got held up a bit behind as well, but Lee's just absolutely left us for dead in that. I think he managed to get them on the banking, so before T1, and I just got them at the worst time imaginable. Alright, thankfully now we can start picking up the draft from the Mazdas and stuff like that, so being in a, a train with the touring cars isn't as much of a kind of priority anymore. Car on your left. Clear on the left. Right side. Clear on Just the have right. to run our own race and see where the land lays come the end. There's a yellow flag flashing ahead, but I think it was Erinus. Alright, so top 10, we are P9. Still potentially a top 5 to play for, depending on what happens ahead traffic wise and stuff like that. It's never over till it's over, especially in iRacing, especially in mixed class. Well. Left side. Clear on the left. That wasn't the cleanest Mazda overtake, but I knew I had to send it there. Suddenly Tyler behind is catching as well rapid. We had a bad bus stop last lap, but similarly. It took 1.3 seconds out of us, so. Looks like he maybe slingshotted from uh, from Neil to get that lap time. And start trying to get some hot laps of our own. Bus stop is definitely our Achilles heel at the minute. Losing so much time through there. And again, just can't carry the speed that the others are carrying. Disappointing. We're going to do another 101. Tyler's going to probably be another 1-0. Tricky. Well and truly in draft now. Alright, let's see if we can keep up. I think potentially if I can uh, help push Tyler away, I think we're maybe faster than the guys just behind us here. I speak a lot about body language in multi-class, so I'll try and show Tyler with where I'm putting my car that I'm not trying to make a move back on him. Want to use his draft and help try and push him potentially.
Not going to do it like that though. Lost all the speed and momentum. Just can't get that bus stop right in this car. Don't know what I need to do differently. I break early, it doesn't work. I change down, it doesn't work. We've got a GT4 behind us. How does one bus stop? Bust up well when we're behind Neil, so we just need to stay behind Neil for the rest of the race then. And that should help. It's quite a big biff then, I, uh, I'm surprised that was only a 0x to be honest. I just don't understand why I still not figured out that going side by side into the bus stop just slows us down loads. Like it, it went defensive then and it really compromised him through the bus stop. I don't know if I just biffed him wide there, so I'll give him the position back. A wild GT4 Clear appeared. He came from absolutely nowhere, somewhere from Canada, I believe the phrase was in practice. And now we're all losing the slipstream. Can't even really blame anyone else this time. I think me through the bus stops are really just hindering the overall performance. I think Tyler's probably pretty fast. It was Tyler that got spit out to the left here coming towards the bus stop that lap when we got him as a freebie. I just can't... Can't find a decent line through here. That's it then, game over. <laughs> he must have got a slow down as well. Somehow still battling for P10, is that right? Or is it going to update across the line? Doesn't sound right. We'll still take a top 10 in this result in uh, in this race, to be honest, having started... Was it 16, 14, something like that? I don't know why the bus stop is suddenly so problematic for me. I ran so many laps here last night and it was just never a problem. I found a breaking point, I found a line and it was just working and now it's just not. 
track temps potentially. Maybe I fried the tyres a bit too much. I know the front wheel drive, uh, sort of the tyres in this, do start crying quite badly. No point him sitting flashing his lights, the GT himself doesn't want to be around the outside there, so I don't know why you try and go to the left. Never in the history of endurance racing at Daytona have two cars been able to get through that little chicane side by side without one of them ending up off the track, so... He also allowed Mateus to really catch us up there, so super good GT4, thank you sir. Francesco Sotoni. Alright, starting to get properly mixed mixed class here. Looks like a Mazda a couple of positions in front, and the GT4 has killed himself. Saw that one coming. That car is a lap down. We turn into a Mazda through the bus stop. Oh god, it's so slow. Still there. That car is a lap down. Clear. Car right. Let's give Mateus a right run. Right side. Too wide. Stay on the left. The McLaren can't control this car. Keep to the left. I wonder if Mateus is going to lift or if he's going to try and pursue it. I mean, if he gets clear, then that's fine. I'll tuck him behind. That's no problem at all. That Honda is rapid in the straight line. Keep to the left. He's trying to turn down on us. Clear. Right side. Still there. Clear on the right. Car right. On the left, clear. All right, we're dropping now. So it hasn't turned out to be uh, quite the romantic event I was hoping it was going to be. I thought it was going to be some nice close racing, maybe some fuel saving, doing it on strategy, good pace, maybe not the fastest, but you know, maybe a top five, something like that. And it all sort of went downhill from qualifying onwards, didn't it? GT4 about to come and take us again. Better for everyone that that happens on the banks. I just can't believe the pace of this Civic in front in the straight line. I never realised the Honda was so fast. I mean, it was maybe, maybe the slipstream kind of slingshotted him past, but... So far we're slow, slow around the straights and on the banking and we're slow in the infield. And he's just slow in every single corner it seems. Just does us again down the straights, frustrating.
You get such a good run through there compared to me. It's just so slow through the infield. I forget the run this time, I might take it. I think I want to be in front of him through the infield really. I think he slowed us down that lap. I think we did. We did that lap where we got just below a 101 until he got past us and he's slowing us down to 102s now, so. just diving it in way too deep, he's just overdriving it in the corners and it's slowing us down too much. I mean any car can drive in a straight line and take its slipstream. Does it straight away there, tries to dive into the back of us. I think that was a, uh, it was, it was Neil that was off the road there. So we're back to P9, so we're back in the top 10. Hey dear me. Here's the real slug hours, middle of the race, nothing's really happening. Just trying to do the laps, keep it on track. Try not to lose any time in traffic. Try not to lose any time for the guys that are around you on track. There's Nicholas. Oh, Robert must have dropped it because Nicholas is back ahead and Robert's down three positions there. Quick correction on the way into the bus stop there, back end wanted to come around. Alright, have some sugar. Tyler got a slow down there through the bus stop then. Had to let us both go. He's immediately back on our tail and hounding us. for catching back up to us. Just realised the fight at the, uh, the front of our class is still very close. P1, 2 and 3 very close together. Thanks for that, Mr. GT4. Stay on the left. Clear on the right. I got very hairy. Zero X for your, uh, either of us, though. Just a bit of door banging. Let him go back to the inside because he's got the run. Stay on the right. I'll stay out here and let Tyler go as well, to be honest. It's all going to add up in the end. So let Nicholas catch us quite rapidly behind us now though. That was a three second lap for us because of that GT4, who was fighting absolutely no one. Made a right meal of it. It's 
see if we can work with Tyler to clear this other guy, because uh, I already had his card marked from practice anyway. I thought he was driving a bit loose and reckless. That car is a left down. Car on your left. Clear. That rejoin through the bus stop didn't make me too happy, to be honest. So it'd be good if I could give uh, give Tyler a push and us both get through. Let's see if I can get the run. We know that Civic seems to be mighty fast in a straight line. Zo Zodong, he is fighting every single lap like it's the last lap, and so far that's allowed me to catch up to the back of these two, and Nicholas is now 2.5 seconds. We've already just lost sort of 7 tenths in one corner because of that. I don't think he understands that if he doesn't stop bickering like this for a tiny positions when we're only just gone halfway through. He's not going to be battling for 7th anymore, he's going to be battling for 12th. But hey, racecraft wasn't learnt in a day. Completely lost the marker boards then. <laughs> Didn't get the best run out of the bus stop either. It's like because of my poor bus stop, I seem to like, I spend the entire banking just trying to catch back up to them. And then by the time I'm there, I can't do anything with it. This GT4 might put the cat amongst the pigeons now. It's pretty peaceful not having voice chat turned on to be honest. I think it's the first race I've done without it on. Nice to not know what the other people are thinking about. <laughs> What's going on. Right side. Clear on the right. Another GT4 makes a half assed job of it. I just hope that we're saving fuel compared to everyone else. Whoa, where did that Mazda pop from? That car is a left down. Well, that car is a left down. I was a whisker away from the slow down there. So that says to me that I left as much space as I could have done. Car on your left. Clear. Car on your left. Stay on the right. Still there. Hold your line. 
Clear on the left. And Nicholas is here. So thanks to Zoidon. Tyler's finally got past him though, that's good. Hopefully Tyler defends as hard as what he's just been doing. You know, it's always funny when you get these kind of pre-composed opinions of people and then you see they're in a Red Bull livery. Another slipstream train then. Where do we think that Zodong is going to make his dive? Because we know it's coming, we just know it is. If he goes to the outside, I'm going to purposely stay low and try and draft up to Tyler and try and hang him out around the outside. I want to be second in this train behind Tyler. I've not got the run this time though. That was a bit of a surprise, I really braked then. I'd normally show my nose and then purposely roll off the brake to get alongside the slower car there, but wasn't the way that Zoridon wanted to do it. Good job I had my cat-like reflexes. It's going in too hot into all the corners in the infield, it's like when we're following, uh, was it Mateus earlier? And so Tyler's dropped us now through the infield. I blame Max for stopping. nearly executed but I was too hot in on the brakes oh and he's gonna die of course he is right I might box I might get out of the way of these two slowing us down The only concern would be if you come out 
either well not with a draft i guess i guess even a traffic would be better than no traffic because at least you get a draft even from the mazdas a bit absolutely dreadful if you came out with uh, just a load of fresh air to chase but surely the field is spread out enough now that There'll be someone to slipstream behind. That was an annoying off track. Didn't realise we're up to six X's now as well. I was going to do it right up until the moment when he did. I don't want to be behind him anymore. Left side. Clear. That car is a lap down. MX-5 leader ahead of us. He, uh, he went into the pits big and I was, I was going to do the same if he didn't, if that makes sense. And then he did, so I swerved at the last minute. That's fine, I, uh, I wondered if he was just trying to fake out Tyler ahead of us. But he did actually go then. So that's fine, it gets rid of him. Every lap was the last lap in his book ever since, well ever since the practice session. He got my back up, so... See if we can sniff off Tyler's draft a little bit now and try and set some hot laps. Run for a 0.7 right now, so that would be sort of fastest lap of anyone on the track at the minute in our class. I suspect that I'll drop a little bit as we get onto these straights because the draft isn't that strong this lap. That's going to be a slowdown. All right, let's box then. Just need to make sure that's clear before we get to the line, otherwise we get the penalty anyway. Right side. Clear on the right. All right, let's see how this goes then. Well, it went really well. Let's see if the fuel straps work out. Put an extra click in just to try and be safe. That's it, go. All right. Putting a lot of faith in that calculator there that I've made. See where we box out, we're on fresh rubber of course. Back to a full tank. Fresh tyres are on the front only. So the back might be a little bit loose and everything's going to be cold as well. Very cold. Car on your left. Clear on the left. Don't know if front only was a good strap. Bus stop's going to be terrifying.
All right, Nicholas is pitted behind, so he's for position. And Zuri Dong looks like he's dropped a few positions in this pits, so that's good news for us. I just don't know where to break this lap. Let's try super early and hope it's enough. It wasn't enough for that Porsche or whatever's in front of us, was it McLaren? All right, we survive at least, that's a good start. Now just to keep an eye on the fuel calculator and make sure that the uh, laps in the tank don't drop below the laps remaining. Maximum race laps predicted now is 71, so we should be uh, should be fine. <laughs> I don't trust the calculator, Craig, I don't trust it all. I made it, that's why I don't trust it. <laughs> and of course the calculator works off what we have been doing in the race so far, including all the lift and coasting we've been doing. And it doesn't account for things like that. Why are these rear tyres still not got any temp or grip in them? Just try and throw the brake bias forwards a little bit. Try and take some work off the rear tyres for a bit. Just sliding under the trail braking. Mazda send. These front tyres are giving us some nice grip though, look at this lap time that we're on for. At the minute, a uh, zero flat 0.76, and then that happens. So Vin Diesel sort of uh, heard us getting carried away. Thought he'd come and pay us a visit. It's still going to be way faster than when we're caught behind... Uh, it's Tyler, wasn't it? Is Tyler pitted now? Can't even see him on the standings board, does that mean he's crashed out? Anyway, we'll start clutching into bus stop, start clutching into T1. Nicholas is our main battle on track for position, and he is faster than us, he has been throughout the race. So, I'm not going to fight too hard to keep him behind us, it's pointless. If anything, I can use him to my uh, to my advantage. Hopefully save enough fuel to be able to battle him later in the race, if the time comes. We just jumped a lot of positions on the standings there, on the relative. So maybe this first half of the race fuel save has paid off finally. Nicholas is pulling away from us, even in the draft. Doesn't fill you with confidence? I've just noticed there's an hour left of the race. How did that happen? Well, plenty of time to fuel save at least. Catching up on Lee, who has also not pitted.
some green numbers back on the dash, that's always positive. I'm triading so much on here. <laughs> Full concentration mode. Full survival mode. Still a couple of boys not pitted ahead there. We might be on for something here. Don't like Tyler being back behind us though. That was a TCR that's not pitted for position. Off to the side. I guess we would have got him anyway in the pit stop, but... Gone. P5 confirmed. Thanks, Spotter. I didn't realise. Relative board has just dropped us some positions, which I can't say I'm surprised about actually, because I think it had us way too, way too far up. I've had to drop it from uh, draw all cars for frame rate problems. So basically everything might not be as rosy as I thought it was two laps ago. But it might still be rosier than when we started the race, so that's good. And everyone likes it when you're coming up on two Mazda side by side. Tyler Brown not really catching though, so that's good. Got two tenths out of his last lap, but... That's pretty insignificant, that could be anything. That car is a left down. Car on your left. That car is a left down. Clear on the left. Let's keep saving the fuel for now, see what works out after the pit stop. See if we know what we're fighting for. Finally setting sub 201 lap times, which is nice. That car is a lap down. Left side. Clear. That car is a lap down. Car on your left. Clear on the left. Going with a strat of the more fuel I save now, the more I can push later on in the race. Because we did like a 2... 2.38 I think on fuel, that outlap when we pushed. So we need to have <laughs> that much going on to the last lap. Lee ahead is definitely still not pitted. So that should be a freebie, that should put us to P6. Mateus in the lead, I'm fairly sure was behind us, unless there's two. I don't have enough time to look through all the names. So that should potentially put us in the top five. If we can get a top five out of this from where we started, I'll be very chuffed.
GT4 come to party. Tyler's just taken loads of time out of us this lap though. It was seven seconds at the start of the lap, now he's down to five. Car right. Did not see the GT4 coming. Still there. That's my bad. I think with the fact that I didn't see him, it was probably coming from a long way back as well though, so... Not sure if I need to feel too guilty about it, or if it needs to be a bit less sandy. Especially at this point in the race. There's a lot going on, there's a lot to think about. This is why crew chiefs and teams and engineers and everything were brought into motorsports. There's a lot to try and figure out from the cockpit. Might need to start actually pushing Nicholas along a little bit now because Tyler's catching up and I don't want him to. Oh, that will definitely allow him to catch up. Unsighted for the marker boards. Tried to break it smoothly, but I saw it too late, and so I had to slam on, and it doesn't turn at that point. are all battling for position. Broke him up a little bit there, feel bad, but Nicholas was going for it anyway. Push Nicholas around the banking. And again. Tyler is closing in. Found some pace in that Civic. Still not enough though, Tyler's still gaining. Bad lap for traffic I guess that lap for us. Where there was Mazdas at the start of the lap.
Tyler's in the mirror now. Might have been for a while, but I've only just noticed he's in the mirror. Nicholas blinked, and I got very scared. <laughs> and as a result, again, didn't break through the bus stop. That was terrifying for him to blink out like that. Still faster that lap than uh, than the lap before when we got ma Mazdas. Must be so frustrating for the car that or it is so frustrating for the car that's leading because those sliders made a massive mistake through the bus stop there and he gained like a second on me and you just pull it all back in the uh, in the draft. If that was any other track or any other race then that would just be a second gap that you'd manage to get over someone but not here. I got to slow down, I think. That car is left down. My bum's getting numb. I've been sitting here a long time, and I need a wee. Other than that, everything's great. As we see another car on the relative there that has not pitted. So I, I reckon that Mateus in P1 has not pitted. We can see Masaki has not pitted. Lee has not pitted. So we potentially are P4 after the pit cycles play out. Guess it just depends how long those guys are in the pits for. But even, even just the trundle down pit lane, I think we'll get the 24 seconds back to the leader. Just hope our fuel's right now. I was about to cream him. <laughs> you know I've had a panic break when the uh, when the trace bar there hits 100. He probably absolutely pooped himself. I did. Yeah, cone. The cursed be thy orange.
wanted to give him another quick tap, but it uh, started not overlapping very well. Or we started overlapping too much, I should say. We went square up. Still the guys I had not pitted. Are they trying to no stop it or what's the deal? That car is a lap down. Car right. Clear. I was hoping that Mazda might hold the GT4 up a little bit. It did. That meant that the GT4 couldn't dive into us at the uh, International Horseshoe there. That was very friendly from that Mazda. That means the GT can get us around the banks. Everyone's a winner. Well, the GT4 wasn't. He definitely missed out there. Keep to the left. Clear. Finally, a decent run through the bus stop for us. Try and give Nicholas a big push around the banks this time. Should catch him quite early on in the straight this time. Still didn't give us an amazing lap time. And still the guys ahead haven't pitted. Still got a while to go, I guess. About 40 minutes. Your usual IMSA race distance. I don't know if Nicholas has started breaking early there or if I started breaking late, but every time, last couple of laps, I felt like I was about to absolutely take him out. Not ideal. Could see the markers that time through his windscreen. Oh, I've got an off-track, though. I've been lifting off a little bit just as we got close to uh, close to the bump draft, but I don't think I need to. I was just conscious that if I hit him too hard, I've had it before, if you hit the guy in front too hard, it just spins him out, but of course this is front-wheel drive. Just do a little lift. See, it does just give him a little bit of a wiggle. The real try-harding hours are here. Who's up? I 
don't know where the monster is, so I don't know when he's going to pop out. Watch these off tracks now. Absolutely super glued together. Oh. I don't know what's happened there. I don't know how we've turned him. That is not ideal. Ah. I don't know what the difference was there. We've been doing that for laps and laps and laps. We've not got the pace over Tyler, I wouldn't say, on our own. F for Nicholas. That's very, very, very disappointing. It's dropped quite a few positions as well. I just hope it's not. I hope that didn't result in a crash. Like, I hope I could save it with the front wheel drive. We killed a guy. Clear on the left. As still, it seems that they've not pitted this lap. Seventeen seconds now. The gap. Tyler's got the run. Left side. Clear. Right, no bump drafting then. Gonna have to be selfish. I mean, to be fair, before I was, we were trying to pull away from Tyler and Tyler's here, so... Just hoping we can piggyback off Tyler's pace, to be honest now. Got us closer to uh, the guys that haven't pitted. Surely it's not possible to do a no-stop. With my normal race sort of pace, it was saying that I was doing, that I would get a, an hour and 10 minutes, I think it was, off fuel. And obviously we're a long way past that now. But looking at Mateus especially, I think I'm sure Mateus was behind us before the pit stop still. He's still got lap pace. To say that it's potentially been fuel saving all this time. So all in all, there are some absolute wizards within this race. I'm scared to bump draft now, so I'm just not gonna bother. Position. 
Nicholas has caught or gone past the guys that he was fighting with. So as long as he pulls a gap, I'll let him pass before the end. Just want to make sure I don't let too many of them past. I not make contact with him, like I say, I'm just super nervous making the contact now. <sighs> one like equals one prayer for Nick. Can't even do likes on Twitch. Maybe we'll try slingshotting instead. Car right, clear. Can get enough overrun. So what do you do when you're catching in the draft, but you don't want to bump draft him because you don't want to kill him? But then when you try and slingshot past him, you don't have the speed. Rock in a hard place kind of syndrome, innit? Has to go in high to get out of the way. No, it's come back down. Mirrors, very useful. I'll stall out as we come alongside now. Still there. One of the cars ahead has now pitted still and there. come out still Car ahead. That's Alexis. Or maybe it's more that Alexis has dropped down the order because there's still the same uh, same suspects at the front. Car on your left. You sent that in the most half-hearted way. Clear on the left. Ugh, GT4 drivers, eh? Why is it going to the outside every time? Like, never mind, not to worry. It's only his own race that is ruining. So I still think that Lee, Mateus, and Masaki all need to stop, and we should get them all when they do. Unless Race Labs hasn't clocked everyone's pit stop, which is possible.
right side. Still there, hold your line. Tyler gives it to us. Clear. Might have got slow down, did he? No. Alright, this is more like it. Still there. Clear. Right, well I'm starting off to think that there's uh, something wrong with the race labs board because I don't believe for a second that these guys can have gone this deep in the race with no pit stop. So, looks like we are fighting for the position we are. Nicholas has dropped back even further, so I won't be able to redress that position, which is unfortunate. Fifteen minutes to go, one sprint race left. Right side. Is he going to let us have it? Okay, Just about. Yeah. Get off track for our troubles. No doubt he'll get the run back alongside. Left side. Keep to the right. Stay on the right. Clear on the left. Never saw the three board then, that was terrifying. Nearly just pushed him all the way through the bus stop. Robert behind is setting some decent times. I just pulling away from that group that he was with. Nearly lost Tyler then with those GT4s coming through. The gap was definitely up to a second at one point, or 1.2 in fact I think it said. 
thankfully obviously those same GT4s have to get past uh, past Tyler as well and slow him down in the same way. So I wouldn't have thought that Robert behind us uh, in striking range. So this is B6 and 7 on the road. There must be something wrong with the standings board in terms of it saying who has and hasn't pitted. There are two Mateuses in the race. I've just seen the bottom one in P13 now in class. So that explains the Matthias conundrum at least. Thought that was a slowdown for Tyler then. Right side. Still there, hold your line. Clear. Bit of bumper this time. Says, come on, Dump, time for you to lead some laps. Said, well, I think I've got the fuel for it, so go on then. How many laps in a race, though, Spotter? That's what we want to know. And can we, on pace alone, do anything about Tyler? And he's a rocket ship of a Civic. Rocket Civic. Certainly can't shake him through the infield, that's for sure, or oh, not that lap. Must have got a better exit because he actually dropped back before he started catching again just then. It's 0.4 coming onto the, uh, onto the banking and then dropped to 0.5 before it's back to 0.4 once again. Try and get a good run on these Mazdas. One of them has just absolutely murdered himself on the curb. Left side, that car is a lap down. Clear. Car on your left. Clear on the left. Maybe Tyler is prone to a mistake then. Looks like we've pulled away from him a little bit this lap. Maybe he's fuel saving himself. Maybe he just doesn't want to be leading as we get towards the end, so he can get me on the banks. Oh, I got very loose there on the brakes. Again, leaving Tyler a little bit coming onto the banks. I'm concerned for his race that he might, oh, excuse me, that he might be uh, fuel saving. Right. 
bit loose through there. P3 and 4, GT4 are still nice and close together here. Tyler continues to drop back. I wonder if he picked up some damage from somewhere. Just to be safe, bit of clutching. Well, probably three more laps to go. Looks like we are just going to hold on for a P6 or 7. That car is a lap down. My little greedy eyes lit up when we came out of the pits and I was working out that we might end up in a top 5, but I think considering where we started, a top, top 7, top 10 even, it's pretty good. And on a race like this, you'd have to say it is sort of on pace alone, pace and survival. Car right. Still need to uh, chat to Nick after the race, of course, and Clear on the right. try and make amends. Tyler's dropped back massively, he must be fuel saving. There's no way that he was that slow in comparison to me. They sort of done it the other way potentially, is push, push, pushed up until the pit stop, put the fuel in it and then found out it's not enough, whereas I was fuel saving a fair amount before the pit stop. And then, still probably didn't put enough in myself, but enough that we could get away with the fuel and stuff on track as we needed to. Only if we don't do things like that though. But he's out of draft range now anyway, is Tyler. In fact, he'll be lucky to hold off uh, Robert in P8, so he might lose his P7, yeah. This is all providing that we uh, get the white flag when we think we're going to get the white flag, of course. We're going to get 2.7 laps remaining across the line, so I might just fuel save that to get that up to the, the full round number to get 3 laps of fuel left. I'd always rather have too much than not enough. That car is a lap down. To Tyler. Just catch up massively there. You've got about two laps of fuel left. Mazda scared off the road by Tyler. <laughs> turned in and <laughs> turned out again. I love it when they come past you and then cut straight in so you can't see the braking zone anymore. Tyler is now putting the foot down again. Moment of truth, we're either about to get white flag or about to have our day ruined. With our white flag we can push. I 
don't have a strategy for the run that he's going to get coming around the banking. Annoyed that I couldn't make the most of uh, when he backed off those couple of laps. Need the best bus stop of our life, which is Achilles heel, the absolute weakest part on this track for us. He knows he's gonna get a mega run through there as well, he's not even he's not even on our bumper through here. And we finally nail this blasted corner. No we cannot. I think he got a slowdown, he was wide. That's my only hope, is that he got a slowdown. I don't think he did. He's going to get us on the line. Right. We're going to hold on. Right I don't know if we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> P6 on the line. Oh, jeez Louise. What a race that was. Photo finish. Oh, he, he actually clips the muscle. I thought I heard a bang. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Holy cow, what a race that was. <laughs> really um, sort of really chuffed with the amount of positions I managed to make up through that race obviously there were a few incidents along the way that we'll sort of will address now so obviously the first big one was uh, that bump draft with Nicholas that eventually turned him around so that was just I was just so disappointed with that one to be honest I still don't really know what to think about it to be honest I know um, sort of coming up to the line there's a little bit of um, kind of dancing around from my car. I looked at his onboard and his steering wheel is just completely dead straight. Obviously, there's nothing that he's done differently there. So I don't know if Netco just overreacted a little bit or if I was just getting too aggressive on the bump draft or what. But, you know, we'd been doing that sort of time after time after time and lap after lap and it had been fine up until the point when suddenly it wasn't. So I know at the point of when he spun out, we weren't lined up very well at all. I was sort of off to his right hand side a little bit. But again, we'd been like that doing bumping previously and it hadn't been an issue. So. Yeah, a bit disappointing. Um, he was really good about it after the race, though. He sort of just accepted that it was one of those things. I sent him a message and he was just like, oh, you know, it's all good. So it's a bit of a relief. He's not um, sticking pins in a voodoo of me or anything like that. I know at the time in the race as well, I said um, that I hope did not got any damage. And I didn't realise in the race that there was two Nicholases. So I was looking at the wrong one coming back up the standings and thinking that this was the Nicholas that I'd turned around. But um, yeah, I had all these grand ideas of letting him come back past if he caught up to us and stuff like that. And I didn't realise it was a, di a different guy. But um, yeah, so the guy that we, we turned with the bump drafting, just, it just wrecked his car, it pulled wheels off and everything. Um, he did repair the car and he carried on to the end, which is kind of a bit of a relief. Um, but yeah, that was not ideal whatsoever. Then we've got that little incident with the Mazda going through the bus stop. Um, yeah, that one's probably all on me, to be honest. I didn't realise that I'd not left quite enough space on kind of the third apex of the bus stop, the one with the sausage. But then he really chomps that curb, and so I don't know if that pushes him out a little bit wider into us and then we make the contact. Um, but I'm kind of chopping, it's not really a side-by-side -side corner, um, so I couldn't afford to have waited in that, uh, in that moment because we were, you know, we were fighting for position as three TCRs, so I don't know if maybe he should have just backed out and let us all go or if there's anything we could have done differently. I think for me to have stayed on the line and not got a slowdown myself, I kind of had to take that line, but it wasn't enough space for him, so yeah, it's, it's on me either way. Um, even if the contact is kind of, I think it's his nose to my kind of rear quarter, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I should have left more space and I didn't do so. My bad on that one, definitely. <laughs> and then coming to the line, um, as far as I'm aware, going below the yellow on the trioval is a, is a fair move. It's a legit move. So we managed to get the run on Tyler and uh, or sort of keep enough of a run to keep Tyler behind us and kind of use that Mazda. Um, I used his draft as much as I could and then dipped below, whereas Tyler had to go the long way around the outside. And then Tyler obviously had the contact with the Mazda as well, um, so we managed to pick the position up. So what I didn't realise as well until after the race, I was looking at the results and I was like, why isn't Tyler behind me in the standings, um, like in the final results? 
that contact with the Mazda actually put him over his incident limit, and so he got a black flag across the line, basically, which obviously he couldn't serve, so he dropped like 10 positions, I think, because of that contact, so that was unfortunate contact for him at the end, it really um, kind of affected his race. But uh, yeah, that was a real sort of adrenaline photo finish across the line there. It was uh, a really good end to a, a pretty long, tough race. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be everything for this one. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Obviously a bit of a longer one. I've got a few or got another longer one coming up because we did the IMSA Endurance as well. So that's coming up soon as well. Um, and obviously this is all gearing up to the Daytona 24, which we'll be, um, we'll be racing in at the weekend. So we'll be streaming that over on Twitch. A um, couple of videos, like I say, coming out through the week. So keep an eye out for them. But in the meantime, don't forget to do all the good stuff over here. Like it, comment it, share it and all that jazz. Take it easy and look after yourself and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm-hmm.